I have recently finished my playthrough of the Total Conversion mod for Skyrim known as Enderall, and the question now is, is it any good? Spoiler alert, yes. Welcome to episode 102 of the Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. One of the terms you're going to hear when you look into Enderall is Total Conversion or Total Conversion Mod. But what on earth is that? Basically, it means you're getting a new game built on the Skyrim engine. It is a mod, but it's not something that adds to Skyrim. If you think of mods such as Falskar, which added a new land that you could visit from Skyrim. You could go there with your character, your Dragonborn character, and play Falskar. And there were places like Moonpath to Elsewhere and a host of other quest mods that add places that you can visit with your Dovahkiin. Well, a total conversion mod is not like that. It is a completely new experience. And it's not even a short experience. It's actually got probably in the region of 100 plus hours of gameplay in it if you want to explore all the different places you have access to. So this really is a difficult one to judge. Do I judge it as a mod or do I judge it as a game that just happens to be completely free? The land of Enderal is a large world space. It is beautiful in places, terrifying in others, and honestly, it is an epic achievement in its own right. Just as a place to actually play, it's pretty damned incredible. It's really detailed, it's very densely populated. You will be finding a lot of things to do, a lot of places to visit, and I will say that overall, it is beautiful. They've not just added a landmass, they've, they've added a lot of new textures, new models, they've changed the lighting, definitely. The game looks a lot better than the base game of Skyrim. Remember, this is on the standard edition of Skyrim, not on the special edition, and it looks phenomenal. Be warned, it really is very demanding on your system. Even if you're used to running a fully modded, visually upgraded Skyrim and getting 60 frames a second, Enderol will push your system. My system's pretty damned good and it dropped below 40 frames a second uh, in some places. Now, you can tweak the settings, but I didn't even have them at the highest settings. The, the reason for this is the world is just so detailed, there's so much in it, and it really does push the system to its limits and then some. I suspect if they could have got this game working on the special edition of Skyrim, it would perform better because the ways in which it hogs performance seem to favour the, the new engine, the Skyrim 64-bit engine. However, at the time of making this video, that is not possible. They would need to rewrite it once the script extender has be, been rewritten. If that has happened by the time you listen to this video, you may find Enderol has actually got a special edition version, and I can imagine it will perform a lot better. But I don't imagine that's going to be something that appears quickly. It's probably a fairly large job. The main story in this Total Conversion mod is amazing. I'm told it kind of follows on from another Total Conversion mod for Oblivion, a mod called Nerim at Fate's Edge, and I sort of almost wish I'd played that so I could understand some of the, the subtler references, but the, the main story is really, really well done. They tell a great story. Now, if you're a fan of Lovecraft books, you're probably going to recognize the story straight away. And the same is going to be true if you've ever played something like Mass Effect. It is a very familiar tale, although it does have some of its own little twists, but it's just really well told. It will sometimes feel a little linear. It does tend to steer you in a certain direction. And believe it or not, there are not a lot of other major quest lines outside of the main quest. There are a lot of side quests, 
but they tend to be just single or maybe double quests, not major story arcs like the Thieves Guild or the Mages Guild in Skyrim. You're not going to be taking over lots of different guilds, you're not going to be ignoring the main quest as you can do in Skyrim. In Enderol, the main quest really is the main event. It is what you're there for, and as I said, it sometimes does seem a little linear in the way it progresses. However, in other places, it gives you quite a bit of freedom. A lot of the choices you make, a lot of the conversations you have do feel like you have quite a lot of control and that it will affect what actually happens in game. There are also a lot of places to explore that seem to be outside the main story or even any of the side quests. There are just tons of places to find that seem to have their own stories and you can read notes and pick things up and find out what on earth happened there even though they really have pretty much nothing to do with you, and you can spend a lot of time just exploring Enderal without actually focusing on the main quest. I will say I did feel like the game would probably suit a more good character than an evil one. I did an evil playthrough, and it can work, it does work, it's just there are some places where some of your answers are perhaps nicer than you might want. And indeed, I get the feeling that many of the quests, many of the conversations are, are better experienced if your character has a little empathy and does have some genuine good feelings towards some of the characters and the people in Enderol as a whole. I, even as an evil character, I still developed relationships with a few of the characters and I did feel very emotionally attached to them. So. Even if you are playing evil, you're still going to get engrossed in this game and its story. But honestly, if you play something a little more neutral to a little more good, a little more normal than the caricature I played, I think it will actually suit this game better. However, if you are absolutely determined to go in and be completely evil, you can do it for the most part. Having said that, the quests themselves are not exactly morally clear. There's not always a good and evil answer. So you're torn between your choices. It's very morally grey in some areas, which I think is very, very good. The dialogue in Enderol is incredible, both in quantity and quality. Now, I played the English translation of this mod, and there were a few translation errors. Not many, actually, but there were a few, and it did give some amusing mistranslations and the occasional book that was a little hard to read. But overall, 99.9% .9 of the dialogue was superb. But I warn you, it was not short. This mod stroke game does not shy away from in-depth and meaningful conversations. You can have conversations that last 10, 15, and even 20 minutes. They are really deep. You, you've got a lot of conversations to have and to follow if you want to experience the game to its fullest. But it really is worth doing. A lot of the characters have deep background stories and I really encourage you to explore them. The history and lore behind this mod, behind the world they've created, is really detailed. It feels massively well fleshed out and it, it just it lets you know at every single moment that you are in a completely different place. You are in a, not just a different world, but a different culture with its own caste system, with its own ways of viewing the world. And, and it's just take your time and absorb those details. Trust me. Now, don't worry. You don't have to read a lot of books if that's not your thing, although there are a huge number of books for you to read if you really want to get into the details, but the dialogue itself is all completely voice acted, as I'm sure most of you expected. But the voice acting is really good. It's really high quality, matching, if not surpassing, the quality in Skyrim in places. There are some really memorable voices, including the main Arch Magister, Tialor Aranthial, I believe is his name. His voice is incredible. He, he doesn't just suit the part, he brings a kind of 
uh, gravitas to that character that really is mind-blowing in, in, a, in a mod. It, it's amazing how many great voice actors they got and who devoted a lot of time from the looks of things. Because as I've said, there are a lot of lines of dialogue. Something else that is worth noting is the soundtrack for Enderall. It comes with its own soundtrack and it's really well done. It's very appropriate and it really does set the mood beautifully for the different places you're going to visit. And it's, I mean, it really does sound like a professional soundtrack to me. This is the sort of thing that would not be out of place in, in a AAA title. It's really good. As I mentioned, there is a new character build system and it's going to seem very familiar for old school RPGers. It's got a few skills. I mean, it's not a very complicated system. It has a handful of skills for general adventuring, a handful of skills for crafting, and then it has a system of memory points. This is, this is where things really get interesting because although you're going to spend quite a lot of time saving up for um, skill books to progress your skills once you've got the right number of skill points available after leveling, you're also going, going to want to spend memory points on these trees. There are three such trees, one for combat, one for magic, and one for what I would call stealth, and each of them branches three times. You cannot travel down every single solitary branch of all of the trees you are going to have to pick, and I would suggest you focus on one at a time, maybe two, and get them to the very top, because once you get two trees to the very top, you get a kind of synergy. You're, you're, you acquire a class. I had a Shadow Dancer class, which was a mixture of stealth and sinistrope magic of entropy, the sort of evil magic in the land. But there are actually a lot of extremely cool abilities unlocked on these trees. For example, I unlocked a mechanical spider that could distract people and then explode and poison them. I unlocked an ability to flashbang people so that I could hide after they discovered me, or even throw oil at their feet, which would cause them to slip on the floor and make them very vulnerable, and also make them flammable if you wanted to mix a little fire magic, you know, and, and set fire to them, basically. One question that will probably come up is, can you mod Enderall? I mean, it, it's already a mod in its own right, but can you add more mods to it? And the answer is yes. In fact, the, the game comes equipped with SKSE and SkyUI and a few other minor mods. And SkyUI comes with MCM, so you pretty much can start installing a lot of different mods. However, I would recommend that you keep it to a minimum. I would avoid anything like an ENB or graphical mods because they can end it with the graphical changes they've made. And as I've said, the game does look brilliant already. I would avoid anything that adds, well, quests, uh, new items, those sort of things, because they probably won't even appear in Enderall. They may not be compatible. You, you probably need to do a little research and figure out which mods are compatible with Enderall and which are not. Myself, I used a handful of mods, mostly small UI changes, including my own mod, Immersive Hood. I used one that added uh, you know, more details when you're looking at bushes and, and that sort of minor thing. Overall, this mod is in many ways a sort of super mod. It comes with so many mods almost built into it, if you think of it that way. Lots of new textures, new models, new lighting, as well as a new land, new NPCs, new dialogue. You probably want to experience at least your first run through on a fairly, I'm going to use the term unmodded game, but of course it's extremely modded in the first place. Overall, I can tell you this is an incredible mod and an incredible achievement. The team that produced this should be massively proud of themselves and I would just like to thank them for what was an amazing journey. A, a story that really did dig its claws into me and made me get a little emotional towards the end, even playing a bitterly flawed character as I was. 
For those of you thinking of trying this mod out, I have actually made a few videos telling you how to install it with Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer, and I'll put some links down below or on the screen somewhere for you to click if you want to go and check those out. It is fairly involved, but then it's a massive mod to install. I want to thank everybody who joined me in my own personal playthrough of Enderal, and of course you, the viewer of this video. I know many of you are wondering whether or not the Skyrim videos will return, and the answer to that is probably eventually when Skyrim Special Edition gets SKSE 64, which is going to happen, I think. <laughs> so when that happens, I will probably start a new playthrough and I will almost certainly start looking at some mods. And of course, then I will get the urge to share them with you. And I hope you can join me for those videos. I will look forward to seeing you there on those videos or any of the other videos I create you're more than welcome to join me for those and until then remember as always have fun If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.